All right, welcome back, guys, for another weekend. Weekend 19, 20, something like that. <laughs> something like this that. weekend, what's the plan, Spider Man? To try and get at least one of the shower walls up. So, last week, quick rewind. Dun dun dun! The first pilot hole is being inserted? I don't know, <laughs> like, drilled. You think it's here? Where is it? It's meant to be here somewhere. <laughs> Oh dear. We gone through, so let's see where it is. <laughs> so, after a couple of pilot holes that didn't work, which you can see are there, we moved it based on where the ribs were underneath the fan. Laz has now cut, um, used a hole saw, a 51 mill hole saw and cut all the way through the bottom and then slots in the pipe he's going to explain sort of how our fittings are going to work and why we kind of used this piece but it literally fits in there perfectly then we're just gonna stick a flex around there to glue it in all right toilet fan through the floor solution if you have a simple toilet we picked up this thing from wix thank you or B&Q. Vicks have it as well, by the way. Well, basically, it's meant to be for drain pipes underneath the sink. Under the so, air. I don't know if it's the right way of doing it, but this is what we're doing. You get a pipe that comes with the Simplu. It's, it's kind of useless of how you're going to output the fan air so what we came up with is i went to wix and we found this thing so what this is is 40 mil flexi hose and you can bend it and you can make it shorter and stuff all right so pretty perfect yeah so it's meant to be for water i'm not using it for water but what you can do with it is you can put what i did is i cut that 30 centimeter long plastic pipe and you put that in here and then you put your rubber grommets around it. And then you can screw that on the pipe, all right? So now you have a solution of the toilet to wherever you need to put it, in the floor or outside. So then the next thing we have to figure out is how do we then put this through the floor or the side and attach a little fan cover or whatever little, this is do it like a little, a little vent. so what this is we picked up from amazon it's 40 mil the reason why it's 40 mil is because i picked up one of these which is uh thing plumbing thing and what it is is that it fits onto this pipe perfectly right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this into the floor that then slides in there. So if you ever need to remove the toilet or whatever, all we need to do off. is pop that off or we can pop it off from this end as well, right? We can just pull that out. And then on this end, then this 40 mil little fan thing will slot in there. Now you can see it's too loose. So what you can do is from that same pipe that came with the Simplu, you can't add a short piece. And in that, this little fan fits perfectly. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue that in there. So the reason why we're doing it like this is because if we ever need to remove this cover to clean it or whatever, or something's wrong, it's not glued into the van. And then we got to like make a big mess to take it out. So this way it's nice and removable. This piece is what gets glued into the van and then everything else just slots inside it and it's removable, right? So this is our solution. And we didn't know how high the van is so i wasn't sure how much of this is going to stick out but we'll show you that now so there's the 51 mil hole through the floor and through everything and that bad boy will fit in there nice and neat so this bit will be sticking out the floor so you gotta bear in mind we have 25 mil insulation and we have 12 mil pipe floor and then we'll show you now what it looks like underneath right so here we are under the van if you're looking for reference where we are, the exhaust is somewhere. The main one is there and you can kind of count the pillars. But basically from the wheel arch 
there's the wheel you have this batten that's where we can batten support so we couldn't go further back we couldn't go more right because of this beam and we couldn't go more left because of this so that's where it is and as you can see only a tiny bit is sticking out so it's perfect so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna glue all the way inside glue this piece in and then get everything fitted on and we're back we've done all that so we've still got the hole in the ground that wood is there to protect us from invaders yeah as it goes straight outside and we haven't attached the fan on the other end yet which i'll show you right yeah so this bad boy it's all glued onto that pipe that i showed you earlier and we just need to boop, plug this in there and we need to plug the toilet pipe in there and it's good to go but before that we need to cut a hole in the top end so we're gonna screw this down in the exact position and then dun 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 our water tanks have arrived so these are the CAK tanks for the XL real based relay that's the fresh water tank that's the wastewater tank uh, 90 something liters fresh water and then 70 I think or 60 something wastewater so to figure out where this hole needs to go I need to quickly test fit those to make sure that when we cut this hole it's not going to go directly into the tank basically so i think it's meant to go yeah uh. sits over that rib there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like this. Dude, that thing is massive. You wanna try it here? Yeah. Ow. <laughs> Lift it. Ow! <laughs> Lift where? Over my head. Uh. Seems to fit here nicer. Alright, get it off me. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Ow. Wait a minute, let me roll out. <laughs> it's off my head. It's off my arm. <laughs> manual again but it said that the fresh water is supposed to be on the passenger side but it doesn't fit in there very nicely does it really? and it can't go any forward because the handbrake line is right here yeah so it has to go yeah. either here or here so if you get the wastewater yeah wastewater tank yeah then we put test for the dab but that should fit there because it's way smaller battery is on that side yeah so it makes more sense so it makes more it would be better to have a this side yeah. cool <laughs> here we are having a picnic under the van surprise surprise so yesterday the weather has been terrible the past two weeks yeah the past two weeks has been terrible anyway we've been struggling to film and do stuff at the same time y yesterday we were inside outside inside outside yeah so plus enough. filming at the same time it's too painful anyway we'll give you guys a quick update of what we've been up to and as you can see we've been making some progress in the shower and also Cass has been busy preparing this window frame because the plan is that when we go to Wales it would be nice to have some kind of 
blinds up. And also, we need to get this done before we can start blocking out the um, kitchen. I will link the video that I followed for how I'd done this. Well, you don't want to regurgitate. It's a straightforward video, so yeah. if you follow that, you'll know what to do. And then you can do the ply around that, and then put your frame in just like that side. This is the diagonal bit. What about the shower? Shower. We got the first wall up, so I'll show you a bit of that how I've done that, but it's pretty straightforward. It's all just loads of subscribing. It's been stressing me out because it's a big deal. And if you do describe wrong once, then you need to kind of cut the whole thing again. So we haven't showed them the ceiling. Oh yeah, we got a ceiling as well. So the ceiling we put up first, because then once the ceiling is up, then we can get the height. Get the height. And anyway, we have to measure around a thousand times and to get that shape to kind of line up with the bottom. So hopefully it makes sense. But anyway, it's pretty complicated. All right. And then a shower update. So I scribe this wall in. Now we need to do the double wall here. Also, we're using nine mil ply. Poplar ply. Poplar. Oh, poplar cool ply. Poplar claw cool ply. But basically, <laughs> it weighs the same as pure poplar. This is from Juicen. So Wix and BNQ doesn't sell it. Juicen sells it. It says poplar core with hardwood ply on outside. So it's, a, it's lighter than the pure poplar. The nine mil sheet from Wix is 17 kilos. And this one from Juicen and poplar core is 13 kilos. So you save about four kilos per sheet. And then we need to do the double wall here. The inside is gonna be nine mil. And then the outside is going to be five mil. So we need to do that. And we also need to do the other side of this. We're going to have a pantry or a skinny pantry here. Yeah. yeah. And we got a creepy, Creek. creaky floor there, which is annoying. But what we are hoping for is that once we put the kitchen and screw the kitchen down, yeah. it will go away. Yeah, it only does this sometimes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this first. So there will be a nine mil sheet here as well. And then we'll put some small battens inside of here that we can screw these sheets into from the outside. So yeah, we'll give you another update soon. So first pass done, we just had to clone the other one. So this should be easy. Let's test fit. Boom. All right. So now, okay, all I gotta do just trace around this, cut that off, and then it can slot in here. Boom! Dun dun dun. <laughs> we got a shelf. A shelf sort of a cupboard. A cupboard. It's very small, but it's working. So, I cut that next piece. There is a little bit of a mistake, but I think it will be fine. And the lesson from this is even if two pieces of wood are right next to each other they're like 14 centimeters apart you can't guarantee that they're exactly the same i should have cut it a tiny bit longer and inscribe it same way as i've done this but everything else fits uh fits nicely on this end everything fits nice and neat all the way up there and then here we have a tiny bit of gap but I think it will be fine because our cladding is going to be here and then we're going to install one of those little clip things that the cladding slides into. So I think it will be fine. All of this bit looks nice and neat. We just need to cut so you can see we're sticking out a bit over the shower. So we're going to trim that and trim that so they are the same thing. But yeah, our cupboard is almost there. So we're not going to install it today. But what we're going to do is I cut these pieces and we're going to stick them in to the wall. We're going to screw them into the wall where our battens are. And then we're going to screw them into these. 
we'll probably have one at the top as well and then at the bottom and then yeah we'll have to figure out what kind of uh, sliders or pulley out things we're gonna have this is all good and next up i'll be moving on to making those walls what's cass has been doing i've been making templates for the fiddly bits of the windows dun, so dun, dun. We were big gonna... mess <laughs> of cereal boxes <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving them for this job we were gonna try and do it in one piece but the ply is not wide enough so instead i'm gonna do it in four bits so basically i'm gonna have a seam here 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 and here yeah and we need to tidy up our vapor barrier as well yeah i just oh i i did but then i cut that open to see if i could screw into this bit yeah you need to be careful oh. screwing into this door because there is some of the locking mechanisms and stuff yeah like so that. i wanted to limit how much we screw into this bit so if i just screw into the button here and then down the side where it's safe mm. sounds like a plan spider-man the weather has been awful you can probably see it from the time lapse it's been raining on and off and when it's raining we can't cut the wood because it will get wet we haven't got enough room in this shed so really it's been stuff gets annoying. wet when it rains hey <laughs> <laughs> anyway we need to get one of those giant tents or something to be able to work in a rain it's too windy but, yeah that's It'll true blow It'll blow away so anyway we're gonna crack on with the next bit and give you guys an update soon Woo! all right so what i'm doing to get this wall is to make my life easier because for the first one what i had to do anyway is you cut a taller piece than you need and a wider piece that you need and then i need to i, I had to scribe it like 13 times to get it in anyway so to avoid that to make it quicker what i'm doing is i'm getting the piece that i already made for that for that side and then i'm gonna stick it i'm sticking it here and you can see the difference so you know it's kind of fitting but it's not quite it's not quite fitting here. so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna lay this piece on the nine mil ply that i already have draw around it but then i'm gonna leave like three centimeters on either side you know along the whole way so that means that it's gonna be bigger than what we need and then i can scribe that in but it will roughly be the correct shape so what i'm doing and once we uh, have this bad boy i'll have to cut one more a five mil put the battens up and then, the other side, the, yeah. and then we'll have to fill up all the holes and fix everything together but anyway this is what i'm doing we'll see how we get on All right, cool. So I'm back. Cut this piece roughly, and as you can see, it's about that much too long. So what I do is I get it in on an angle, because obviously otherwise it doesn't fit. But what I can do now is I can scribe this length in, and I'll show you how to do that now. So what I'm using is one of these circles that we cut out from the uh, with the hole saw from the bench to stick a pencil in it and then I'm going around the top all right subscribe number two I'm taking it off the top and you can see now I'm even closer so there's the original line and now what I'm gonna do is instead of using that circle thing which will take too much off i'm just gonna use the pencil to just like drag it along and that will draw me a line so probably a few more goes and then i'll start doing this edge as well once it stands up a bit more upright after a few templates i have my first piece up so it's probably nearby impossible to get that gap even the whole way around and also because of the rubber seal it's not really 100% flat at the top so I'm happy that the gaps are all level um, and also I could probably shiver it up a little bit more but I'm happy with that and then my next piece is going to be the joining bits from here all the way down to this bit.
but yeah the first bit at the top is up oh and then also obviously i need to do the frame to cover up these but that can be a job for it in the evenings i messed up well i haven't messed up that bad but we do have a gap here which is annoying me i think it's gonna be fine my scribe i haven't quite mastered the scribe i mean i think i have but i measured something wrong so i did cut on my i did cut on my line but i didn't take something into account so maybe i cut too short i don't know anyway i think it will be fine we're gonna have the pvc sit on top of this and then also we're gonna have like a light ceiling so we're going to add a thin batten along here and then that's going to have like a foggy glass all the way in the ceiling that's going to have an LED strip in it or like plastic like foggy plastic ceiling I mean worst case if it doesn't I haven't got any more 9mm uh, poplar ply so if it won't work then I'll cut a new one but I think for now we're just going to try to make it work with that gap so i'm gonna go cut the five mil ply now that will sit here to create the double wall so we can run all the plumbing inside it and yeah going pretty well but i had a half an hour cry about that so anyway this is the reality of van build as a beginner some things work out some things, some things don't it's giving Care himself says, a hard time for something we're literally not gonna even see yeah if it wasn't me i would probably recut a nine mil ply but such a waste time. It is a waste. But anyway, built for perfectionist there. Cass is a perfectionist as well. She's just been too nice. Well, no, but I w if you're going to see it, then all right, yeah. But Yeah, well, let us, know, let us know what you guys think in the comments. It's going to be covered by a batten on the other side. Yeah, and we're going to have the light strip yeah. and the PVC on and top. And then this side is going to be enclosed into another... Double wall. Yeah, so as long as you get this one right... So I do need to make this bit neat. So if not, we'll do Cass's famous saying, where you just add the trim, like the windows that we haven't trimmed yet. But we will do a trim. Cass's famous saying, whether we make a mistake or something is not perfect, we'll just add the trim. Well, look at Cass's, look at Cass's window for the sliding door. Amazing. It's a bit. It's a mess everywhere. There's a bit. <laughs> there's a bit of a mess everywhere. But we're making progress. Like once this bit is done, and the shower walls are out. Look at that. We almost have a room. So five mil pie is in. The scribe is not too bad. That corner is going to be inside the cupboard, so not too bothered about that. And around edges will probably have some trim, but it's not too bad. There's our entry for the air heater and then this will be our gap and we'll probably fit uh the heater control here and a light switch and so on and one of these battens i'll probably get a thicker one not this thin one so basically same with a square one i need to pop the bnq that we can install here because when we install the shower door I want something strong to screw into, not just a 9mm ply. So if you have a square batten at the door, then we'll have something solid to screw into. So yeah, everything is cut. We just need to do the battens for support, screw everything together, paint everything, and then we're getting there. Cut the shower tray to size and cut the ends of these panels as well. Fix everything together, get the shower tray in, uh, and then I think we'll be ready to PVC line everything, build the box for the toilet, install, screw down the toilet as well once the PVC is down. And yeah, we're getting there. We'll need to find out how we're gonna do the pull out shelves for these. I haven't looked at rails for them yet. This is where Cass is at, and she'll probably manage to finish the rest of this because we are on our five more ply. We'll probably she'll probably manage to finish this last week as well so let me see you guys next week we'll see where we got up to on the on the weekdays we probably won't manage to get anything done throughout the weekdays and we'll have to do it on the weekend next week in next week's vlog but keep you guys updated and this is where we're at dun 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 poor lousy boy <laughs>
Lazarus food review. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> tasty. <laughs> right, we're rolling. Right.